All right, so in order to import the grammar examples that they have here, I'm gonna copy this table, and let's see if I can do this properly. And I'm going to copy it into a spreadsheet. And then I am going to export that spreadsheet to a CSV file. All right, and when we go back into, see that we have a grammar.csv. So now we have this CSV file. Now, one of the things that may not be obvious um, is that the, I think almost exclusively, the examples that are provided, there are multiple examples per uh, grammar point sometimes. So for example, if you come down, actually it's easier to show this in the table. Um, down here, you'll see that um, there are multiple sentences, and these represent different examples um, for the same grammar rule. Um, and in some cases, it's different forms or different specific words, but that, that's the idea, is that these represent different examples of the same rule, maybe different variations of the same rule. But... Um, that's, so what we're gonna have to do is separate it twice, right? So we're doing the CSV file where we have the name of the rule and then the example, but then we also have um, multiple examples in this column. So we'll, we'll have to deal with that when we process the CSV file. So um, coming to the syntax here, We have this uh, CSV file here. I have a Rails scratch pad for editing this file. And we'll just say that we want to open grammar.csv. And then for each row, um, we will look at row. I believe it's going to be like zero is the ID, one is the rule name, and row two like that. So here's what we'll try to do. Just make sure that that is the case. Yep, that appears to be right. So we can say um, that the grammar rule, if we come back to our scratch pad, we had this little example of some Ruby code there. And so we'll come back to our dot rb scratch pad and we can say that we want to create a grammar rule and then the example we are going to say, ooh, this is a little bit tricky. Let me just double check something here about the format of the data. So I want to check if Okay, so questions. Okay, that's good. So what I was checking, I wanted to double check whether um, it had question marks as well. Um, but they don't. All of the example sentences just use, um, you know, the period or whatever they, they call this um, symbol that indicates the end of a sentence. And then for questions in Japanese, the sentence will end with ka um, or, yeah, well, ka. So um, that is how a sentence ends, which means that all of the sentence examples end with this character here. So that is perfect. I can do a, whoops. Let me uh, let me see here. Split. We can split based on the period. So after we have the grammar rule, 
we can split whatever the sample sentence or the sam sample value is based on a period and then we can create the example and watch so the example will be find or create by this except we've split it based on the end of sentence character the period so i'm wondering it's quite possible though that that's at the end of the sentence as well so Uh, let me double check something. I oh, don't remember off the top of my head if Yeah, so that's what we need. So select present. All right, so for the examples, we'll split based on the end of the sentence. And if there was a period at the end of a sentence, I wonder if there's any examples in here that do not end with a period. There are, like this right here is doesn't have a period at the end. So in this case, I also wonder what we have to do about the forward slash. I'm just checking on this real quick through the data. It's just that one, we just have that one bad example. Okay, so let's also see, well, you know what we can do? Check this out. Give me one second here. You know what we can do? I'm gonna raise an exception if Um, let me see here. If the last character of the row doesn't equal, although it won't, right? Because the last character of the line will probably end up being, no, because the CSV processor will get rid of the new line. So if the last character of that cell isn't a period, then raise uh, this row doesn't, does not end with a period. And then we'll just spit it out. So check this out. And then I'm just gonna comment this out for a second. Okay. So we have the header. Get rid of that header. Okay. So we have one example. And there's no good reason why that sentence doesn't have a period at the end. That one should. All right, we have another one that doesn't end with a period. So this is just a way of doing like a little bit of, wow, evidently there are a lot of these. There's another one. Although that's interesting because yeah, 
Um, hmm. I'm not. All right. So then we'll go through a little more. Oh, that's interesting. This one somehow we missed. Oh no, there isn't an example for that. That's fine. Okay. Going through, looking better and better and better. No examples for those ones. All right, so we have to add the example of Right, so redefine this method and that's weird because I actually know <laughs> wait a minute what's going on here All right, so this is the grammar rules, but why is it not? Oh, of course it's not. All right, there we go. So we've split them all up. It's created a whole bunch of grammar or uh, example records, 200 of them to be exact. And so we'll just take a, you know, random um, Okay, looks good.